Howdy, folks. Welcome to Rutsy Talk, episode 38. What's up, Slow Beef? Hi. How are you? I'm good. You know, I feel like we haven't had time just to catch up. Just us. It's all these guests. I know. It's ridiculous, the life we lead. You're, you're obsessed with these high clout, big name Let's players. You're turning <laughs> this podcast into a talk show. I'm not, you know, honestly, I think I'm okay with that. And I will have none of it. Oh, well, maybe. I'll... Actually, no, I think it's fine. <laughs> maybe, maybe then I'll, I'll just do my own talk show and leave you. I'll just talk to the celebrities and that's that. That's basically how these previous guest casts have gone in the first place. <laughs> well, I drift diligently into the background. Well, I think um, a lot of it has to do with I sort of I, I sort of had he- headline I sort of like t- took over the agendas on that one. Yeah, I sort of headlines. No, um, uh, you know what I mean, like kind of coming up with the questions and everything. So when I do that, it's obviously easier for me to like ask the questions and contribute to the conversation and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more um, it's more my fault to be honest, since you do much more research than I just kind of show up. Right. Yeah, let's just let's just be clear, it's your fault. It is my fault. I'm not up to date with the let's play lingo. <laughs> the scene. The scene, all the chatter that goes around, right. the let's play rumor mill and whatnot. <laughs> no, um so yeah, we, we we I think future guests, of which I think I hope we get a chance to talk about, uh we're probably going to do more like a tag teamish kind of thing, or you yeah, know. yeah, we've got a very exciting potential lineup. We do actually. It's kind of it's kind of crazy. Well, you've had I think what three or four interested parties? Uh, five lineups. Finally. Five. Yeah, four definites. Um, one I have to. Uh, I haven't. It's been confirmed they want to come on Retsu Talk. <laughs> it's been, con- been confirmed. Confirmed, right, yes. It's not just... It's So you can put that reference number on Wikitubia right now. <laughs> More or less, yeah. Do we want to spoil these future guests or leave it up to the audience's imagination? Um, all right, let's spoil them now. What the hell? Um, first, okay. first of all, Super Great Friend is up next. Uh, especially because I, I rescheduled with him like twice now, just because... Yahtzee was tougher to schedule because of the whole time difference, where his super great friends like, yeah, any time after whatever is, you know, so that one I wanted to, like, make sure. It, it's it's weird because I feel like now we are having to schedule time to do videos in general, you know? It's, uh, which is odd, because usually it used to be just like, hey, you feel like doing some videos tonight? Yeah, sure, I'm free, or not, you know what I mean? No, it's like, it's 10 o'clock, where are the, you were doing the videos? Right, but if you talk about somebody with, like, a 15-hour time difference, then you have to be like, yeah. All right, let's. We got to do Wednesday, six p.m. our time, nine a.m. is whatever. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So super. So yeah. So um, he was going to be this podcast, but I couldn't do it uh, last Friday. So so that's up next. All sham, no wow. Uh, goon slash YouTuber, pretty popular guy. He was like, oh please, you know, yeah, not oh please. He wasn't begging us or anything, but he was like very <laughs> excited to do it. So Seamus. As in S-S-O-H-P-K-C. The letter vomit guy. Yeah, yeah. I think I got him. We Retsu prayed him once, but uh, he was very cool about it. So I extended the offer. I was like, do you ever want to do that with us? He's like, yeah, absolutely, please. So, you know, we got him. Um, right. I got confirmation from Mike of Rooster Teeth that him and I think Jay, uh, oh. yeah, they're, they're going to be coming on. I might go to RTX next year. Oh, cool. I'd like to do that, too, actually. So I've heard is it a, is a gaming con in the same vein as PAX and such. Play games in areas, go to panels and such, and it's in Austin. I'd be very interested to talk to them about how you s- getting us in for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Getting a panel now. Um, how do, how you set up your own con like that? You know, that is a fair question. Like, who the hell do you talk to? How do you manage the whole? You know what I mean? Yeah. Who do you collaborate with? Yeah, exactly. What's your collab situation? Because <laughs> I've been talking to a couple people about that, so. I, I don't, I'm not saying we're doing... About setting up a Retsu con? Yes, retcon. No. <laughs> Absolutely retcon. <laughs> no, 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 not really. But uh, I've been, I've been very, I've been interested in like, how the hell do you do that kind of thing? So uh, uh, that's, that's an interest, that's, that's one point on the agenda. We'll figure out the other 54 minutes of what to talk to them about, but, uh, and then... And I'll show up. Exactly. And then today I found out, uh, apparently on Reddit, um, Wooly of Two Best Friends Play, uh, said they would do the podcast, so um, I haven't contacted them yet. But I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's talk. So this is the unverified claim. That's yeah, basically, because mm. I um I had learned about it on my Ask FM, so I copied it to Twitter to be like, where is this? And then I saw him talk on Reddit about it, so I'm like, yeah, what the hell? 
why not? You know, then, uh, and then, uh, president Barack Obama, I, I'm emailing was interested in coming in talking about, uh, how healthcare.gov can help let's players. Absolutely. I, uh, emailed, yeah. I emailed Conan O'Brien about this clueless gamer series and was told, uh, never to contact him again by mm -hmm. some intermediary of his. Conan O'Brien, by the way, did a scare cam LP sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Um, have you ever watched his clueless gamer stuff? I have. Yeah. I've watched, I've seen most of them. It's really funny. I like it a lot. It's scare cams done right. Absolutely. Well, it's not really like a let's play of any sort, you know. It's um, it's very heavily edited, right? Which various clips. Yeah, exactly. It's, Best of footage. Yeah, it's only going to. Which eat. incidentally, a lot of let's plays are turning into. I'm thinking maybe it's the way to go for certain. Things. Remember Bomberman scare cam guy? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that was that was well done, right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was Conan O'Brien. Oh my God! How. See, I thought Andy Richter possibly or Max Weinberg. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, look, look forward to that and not so much this podcast where none of these people will be appearing and it's just you and me. So what do you think about the direction the podcast has taken? Cause it started with, you know, let's just talk about shit and bullshit for an hour, then have some guests come in. First, our friends. Now people with the let's play clout. Where do you see it going, man? I, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it has peaked. Pretty much, um, we were at the top of the uh, the peak. Yeah, so it's all downhill. I think it's gonna it's plateauing, you know, because yeah, we're gonna, gonna talk see to a dramatic these. drop in podcast quality, starting with this conversation. I think at once once we get through um, Rooster Teeth and Two Best Friends Play, we'll have no one, and then it'll just drop straight off. Maybe the Yogs cast guys. I don't know who are the. We need to know who the uh, the big name. Who's the Kim Kardashian of Let's Play? PewDiePie. Oh well, then who is the um, Sir Anthony Hopkins of Let's Play. Uh, hmm. Research indicates. Oh, we need him on. Toby Games. Absolutely. Psychedelic Eyeball, of course, wants to come on. We're always happy to have him. Yeah. yeah. Sounds just like Anthony Hopkins, too. It is true. Very true. Hello, Spelunky. <laughs> that, that was scary. Um, <laughs> uh, so we can, we can debrief the guests we have had, because this whole, uh, thing started with Total Biscuit, more or less. Yes, your best friend. My best friend. No, um, uh, so the way that worked out was, that was a weird kind of coincidental sort of thing, in a way, because, uh, he, uh, we had talked once on Twitter about something or other, and then we talked on Skype about it, and, uh, just about, like, some video we had done, and, uh, he mentioned going to PAX, uh, last year, which we were at, and he's like, do you want to meet up after a panel or anything? I was like, yeah, sure, but it didn't really work out, so... Um, I found out he was coming to my area, New York City, you know, so I was mm -hmm. like, eh, you want to grab coffee, lunch, something? He's like, yeah, sure. So we met up, we talked for a bit. It was, it was I liked the guy, right? So at the end, I was yeah. like, hey. If you Did ever... you at least point a camera at yourselves while you were talking and upload it to YouTube? <laughs> it was a lot of cursing, and basically, yeah. we, we we were pretending we were in Terraria, only sitting at, like, a counter eating, you know. This lunch is co-optional. It was technically a let's play of Don't Starve, I suppose. Um yeah. So what does that mean, by the way? Co-optional. It's um, it's well, it's a pun on cooperative, obviously, because they're gamers. Okay. But it also they co-opt guests into the podcast who are optional, right? And Biscuit takes a lot of credit for it because he thinks it works on multiple layers. But in reality, I mean, you know, it's a complete disaster that no one should ever do. Ridiculous, yeah. yeah. It's fucking three hours too. That's a that's a hard podcast. Yeah. You could finish Brothers or the Stanley Parable in that time. <laughs> um, but anyway, he was, yeah, so you, you recused yourself from that podcast. Yeah, that was, I had my podcasting instincts told me that, you know, y'all two already have that connection, know each other. I felt like it would have been a third wheel. Well, you know, hey, why not next, well then, you know, low tax came on. There's a reason why two best friends is so successful. <laughs> they don't have a third best friend. <laughs> And when we all do a podcast, you're what, are going to be four best podcast buddies? <laughs> Tell me how this makes sense. Well, you know what it is? After after Total Biscuit, which, I, you know, is like one of these internet celebrities. You make it sound like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> after Total Biscuit, the event. Um, <laughs> but then it was like, you know, fuck it. Why don't we just start asking people? Like, what's the worst they can mm. say, you know? You know? Um, yeah. So we had Low Tax on, uh, which I would say was a tricky podcast it's a weird one wasn't it yes i, I think so but we, we kind of knew that going in right you know because i remember you were like he's gonna be a big goofball right i'm like oh hell yeah you know mm -hmm. um but I, I think i mean all in all i was happy to talk to him for an hour he's a good guy you know i mean yeah 
I, I was interested to talk to him. These podcasts are really more for me than than the people listening is the thing. You know, we are very needy individuals. Abs- yeah, absolutely. And and any wagon we can hitch our star to, that's that's the way this goes. You know, you throw enough shit at the wall, so you're going to get some coattails you can hang on to. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And not get left in the mud. Right. Right. Exactly. So we had we had low tax on, and that was nice. And um, I owe I owe him a big one. Because, um, unlike me, he actually has a recording studio set up in his office. I shouldn't say a studio, like a, like a fucking like popcorn room or whatever, but he does all of it at work work. Because his work is at something awful. At the something awful offices. Right, yeah, which I... Of which everyone knows the address of. Absolutely. And again, I, I still cannot express enough surprise that that actually exists. But <laughs> there it is, I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we were going to do a video together, and things fell through for me, and he ended up, like, waiting in the office and stuff, so now I'm on his shit list. Oh. I have to make it up to him. Not, I mean, not really. He's still, you know, I don't, I don't think he hates me. We but can have him back. I'm I'm happy to have him back. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to make fun of shit with him. I wonder if he'll like to do that. He likes to make fun of things. No, he, just, he doesn't like that. No. Right. Yeah. I guess I should plug his channel. But I won't. Um, Low Texaco ICO optional podcast, right? The completely optional, yep. right? Um, who do we have on? Then we had Northern Lion. That was a weird sort of thing because uh, it turned out he was on Biscuit's co-optional podcast, or I should say, Biscuit Jesse Cox's and Dodgers co-optional podcast. You know, and I just had this random thought in a meeting, like when I heard about that, I was like, I wonder if he'd want to come on Retsu Talk. And then that day, someone had just tweeted me, like, you think Northern Lion would want to be on Retsu Talk? And I'm like, that's a, that uh, obviously is fate, you know? It's a sign. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, we requested him. He said yes. We uh, we had a little scheduling issues there, but it ended up working out. And um, I ended up having... Fun guy to talk to. Absolutely, yeah. I would say, of all the ones we've done, that one probably went... Um, the most There's smooth. probably the most chemistry there, I think. I think that's exactly how I put it, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I had fun with all of them, don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, he, like, we even talked for, like, 20 minutes or so before the podcast even really started, you know? Yeah, we had a warm-up. Absolutely. Really good guy. I could almost forgive him for about 650 Binding of Isaac episodes, but, you know. Well, let's not get carried away. now. I watched his stream, too, which uh, I'm blanking on the name of right now. Where he plays Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with People and stuff in games and things like that. <laughs> it's, That's a co op game? Or you just like ask the audience for input on answers? Uh, it's more like he has a couple guests on, I guess, and then they play as a His phone of friends? Yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. So so there was that. Um, and then. It was? Yeah. And then, so after Total Biscuit, I had the confidence to, to, to ask Yahtzee, who actually I'd asked once before. It sort of ignored me, but this time I'm like, I'll just do the podcast with us already, you know? So Crikey. Right. And especially, he plugged us at the Escapist Expo, which I didn't realize. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. You sent me a clip of it, and he mentioned Retsu Prey, and there was this very tepid applause from the audience. <laughs> like two or three. Like, maybe a couple people, like. Two or three people. Like, one guy with yeah. a parrot grass, like, foam yeah. head, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it was us. Yeah, that was exactly we right. We were there, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, yeah, and that was the tricky one to schedule and stuff. Um, so, it's also trickiest to edit. Yeah. So, an interesting thing is, um, listening back to it, you were very funny, but the problem was... The Yahtzee one? Yeah, I, I actually, yes. Didn't I say, like, five things during the whole thing? <laughs> you, you did more than that, honestly. Five you? zingers! <laughs> but you know what the problem was, is, uh, with Skype, there's always a little bit of a delay, like, even when you and I talk, but with him, it was very... Yeah, similar. it's not as evident in the recording, I think, because I was very diligent about... Because the delay was between when we said something, or no, when Yahtzee said something and you or I said something. There was this, like, one-second delay. So I would be going through and just cutting it, cutting it, cutting it. So it sounds like there's no delay at all. But then Yahtzee mentioned that there was a delay mm-hmm. at the beginning. So I kind of had to get him overlapping a little bit to make sure that that was evident. And then cut it out after the fact. So it's, it's complete nonsense. Like, in the actual recording, the original, I feel like you, there's points where you and he is, like, collide. It's like you just Oh, yeah, yeah. There was this whole, like... I think three minute segment where I was trying to ask a question and then he was sta- uh, saying something. Then we both stopped <laughs> waiting for the other to chip in. Neither of us did that. So then we did the same thing. You know, it's like, you know, when you uh, 
bump into somebody and you do that shuffle to walk past him. Right. Well, it's funny. I was listening back to it and you, I forget what the joke is now, but you told a joke and like neither of us respond to it <laughs> because I laughed and listening back to it, you know, cause it was a good one. And then, but the problem is during the actual recording, it was at the same time he was speaking. So neither of us really heard it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Cause I know, and, and I know people are like, oh, you were mean to diabetes. I'm like, I didn't mean no one. Like, like, <laughs> Who said that? Some guy, some guy on YouTube or whatever. But <laughs> it was my parachute account. Probably. Um, so I'm sorry if I was mean to you, but it was, uh, that's apology accepted. Absolutely. No. Um, for now. As long as I can guest on the podcast sometime. You can sometime, maybe. Okay. We'll Thank see. You. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, from now on, we'll both do the research. So we have both shit to talk about. Agreed. Both have shit. Yeah. That said, I have not done one step toward work on super great. No, I'm kidding. I have a couple of questions already to ask you, but, um, is so he still doing stuff for whatever happened to that deal he had with One Up? Why don't we ask him next week? All right. So I don't know. That's that's guest debrief. Do you want to go into yeah. some more debrief? Well, we've completed a couple of wrong praise that we haven't talked too much about with all the guests. Do tell. Well, there was the Alone in the Dark game, which we've started the second of at this point, and Ecstatica. Yeah. By the time this airs, half of Alone in the Dark 2 will have aired. I was sort of surprised at some of the, the blowback of the first Alone in the Dark that was gonna. That's the first thing I wanted to bring up. I was trying to think of a game, a parallel sort of game, where you might expect this kind of thing, but it, King's Quest VI. Yes, that's exactly the one I was going to bring up. I, I don't remember there being much blowback, though during that one. No, and arguably that's really the best of the King's Quest. And frankly... Yeah, it's a game that's pretty beloved. Yeah. I still, mean, I think. One of my favorite... And yet, here we are shitting all over it, and not too many people seem to take... I don't know, if is offense the right word? Take offense to it? Yeah, no one seemed to mind that so much. I've noticed... I noticed Nitto King on SA um, talked a little bit about it, because he was like, you know, they really shit... They really paint 5 and 6 in a bad light. And, like... I don't want to say passive aggressive because that sounds like a bad thing, but he was just sort of like, I don't know, they're not that bad games. I think Red Supreme is kind of painting them unfairly, which is like, yeah, I mean, the thing is, but we're not a serious review outlet. That's yeah, that's exactly it. You know, I mean, I mean, are people expecting more of a critical assessment rather than just mindlessly shitting on something, thinking of jokes that pop into our heads? I, I don't know. Well, one of the interesting things is we got a lot of positive feedback, I noticed, on the death reel for Alone in the Dark. Because a couple of people were like, oh, Sloby's actually explaining, like, what's happening with the deaths, you know? Which I'm like, is is it is that what people want? Like, more like a Let's Play so kind people of... are craving, yeah, exactly, more of a Let's Play sort of thing. But I feel like the wrong praise are just, like, I don't, for me anyway, I don't know if you feel like, they're, they're just for fun. It's like, we look up games yeah. that, that are kind of wacky or weird in some way, you know? Yeah, we don't do any research into the games for, I mean, I certainly don't. I, I don't think you do, too. You have a memory of some of the games that you've personally played, having owned a Sega CD and played every single game released on it. <laughs> Actually, Alone in the Dark 2, though, I, I watched Mallory's Let's Play, because it's so weird and non-sequitur at points, like some of the items and things you're doing, that I felt like it might benefit from a little bit of, uh, this is why he's blowing in a paper bag and banging it. As opposed to just like, what the fuck is it kind of shit, you know? Trying to make some logic out of the madness happening. Right, like Cobra, um, which I think was a pretty strong one. Uh, at least I felt good about it. Um, mm -hmm. That one, I'd watch parts of it ahead, but there are certain things I had no fucking idea about, like imposter power grass, which... God, right. God damn it. Who could have seen that coming? Right. And then uh, the Dark Seed games, you'd actually done Let's Plays of both of them, right? Exactly, yeah. So those, yeah. those, so you knew those in and out already. Yeah, those I really know well. Like I'd say even more than Snatcher, just because they're so fucking hard. <laughs> you can fuss through Snatcher, you know what I mean? But like, sure, Dark Seed One especially, you really, really have to know the timeline of events, and or you'll you'll fuck up the game. Um, right. Dark Seed Two is just a slog, so you, you'll never yeah. forget it, and you'll never want to play it again. But with Alone in the Dark. I'm I'm struggling to find the point of view that some of the people who gave blowback were coming from, just because I had never personally played the game, and so I wasn't able to, I guess, appreciate the foundation it had laid for games of its ilk, like Resident Evil and such. Yeah. Well, before that, though, let, I mean, we were talking about the King's Quest games. Um, oh yeah. Before before we jump to that part, because um, I would actually I would agree with Nito King on King's Quest Six. I think actually that is not a bad adventure game, and and I would put it. 
like a pretty big notch above the other king's quests, you know. Yeah, it's it's charming. Yeah, I mean, I think the this it the humor in it is, you know, Alexander's pretty ridiculously milk toast, and you know, some of the characters are like silly, you know, circumstances. If you really want to break down the joke, and you can do this with most any joke, you'd be like, okay, it's a fairy tale game made for kids of all ages, and so it's like, okay, yeah, if you take it into a real world context, share some of the yeah. shit. With- but you can do that with a lot of things, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, hey, Mr. Seinfeld, you know what the deal with airline peanuts is? They're an economical snack, and it's a way for air, you know what I mean? Like, it's that kind of thing. You know, great boats or balls or whatever is a real weapon. So <laughs> Apparently it is. That was, Did you know that? I, I, you know, I figured Am I that. the first person to tell you this? I think I am. I, but it's, you know, it's just like it sounds silly, dude. Like, we loaded with grape shot. Like, it is kind of silly under that context. I, but yeah, if, if, I mean, I don't think it'd be as entertaining a thing if you're just like, oh, by the way, let's pause the video right now. Did you know that grape shot is sort of buckshot? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just a... Turn Red Supreme into a pop-up video sort of thing. <laughs> I just think it's a fun thing we do. King's Quest V, though, I do have to disagree with Middle King on. I think that game... Yeah, is. King's Quest V. I mean, y- again, though, if you want to break down the joke, or and the same goes for Dark Seed, actually, is back in the day, the adventure game design philosophy, and I mean really back, was that we we don't have a ton here, so to increase length, we make... Let's the- make it as obtuse as possible. Yeah, really fucking hard. Make them have to yeah. reload saves if they fuck something up. Yeah, keep make the game man winnable in certain scenarios. Yeah, exactly. Right, and it's stuff that like you know I go with the Lucas Arts design theory where it's like no, 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 make the puzzles hard, but don't make people reload save states. And how can you not point out a king that is that fucking ripped? <laughs> or yeah, or yeah. I mean, it's just funny when. Or how Cedric is completely insufferable. <laughs> it's great. I mean, there were fan videos, a fan video made where someone like had Cedric explode at the end of the game. <laughs> That someone made. It's on our favorites list. Or, like, how great was it when that fucking wolf grabs him and then, like, Graham <laughs> sleds after him? <laughs> so drat. Yeah. Throws the pie at the Yeti. And it's... Sure, yeah. So, like, yeah, it's like one of those things, like, if you want, you could be like, well, actually, that game needed to be tough because that was the sort of the King's Quest design philosophy to extend the length of the game and all that. But it's like, yeah, but still... If I jump on a random platform, I just die automatically. Or if I forgot to bring the meat and the pie to the snow area. Yeah, I mean, I'm not hearing an argument that says, like, you shouldn't make fun of that because this. Alone in the Dark now, getting to that, is a tricky one. Because, uh, you know, it uses these sort of, um, you know, these computer graphic concepts that had been around, actually. Um, but it utilized them into a game, you know? Yeah, and like I was saying earlier, having never seen the game and not familiar with... The foundation it laid for future games. Just I'm just taking it what I'm seeing at face value. The graphics look like shit. <laughs> Very angular. The combat is really really goofy. And I think when you were fighting the dog monster, I said something like, "What is this garbage?" <laughs> well, I mean, if you yeah, if you take it at face value, I think I think no matter what you give it for its time, if there are still points where you're like, I don't actually know what this object or character is supposed to be. Like the toilet monster, or or really the wolves, because the game could be pretty creepy in parts. You know, because back then, real yeah, again, really like it, when game graphics weren't that good, you use your imagination to fill in the gaps. Fine, but sure. but those wolf things are even back then. Even when I was, I forget, nineteen ninety two, so I'd been fourteen when I played it. Even back then, I'm like, okay, that's a little silly. You know what I mean? Or the monster walking in place trying to get into the door. <laughs> I mean, how, how can you not laugh at that? Right. I mean, it is it's it's crazy that way. You know. Uh, but I, I know so, like, somebody was like, well, this is like making fun of Pong. And it's like, well, actually, people do make fun of Pong, if you want to know the truth. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... It's it's it's, it's interesting that it came up in Alone in the Dark, but not uh, King's Quest. But what's, what's really weird to me, too, is that, like, I just don't remember Alone in the Dark... I, I guess if it was anything, people might call it ahead of its time. But I don't know that I'd call it, like, an undiscovered gem. Or something that, back in 92, like, everybody was like, holy shit, did you see Alone in the Dark? You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't see how that game holds up on any level. Like, I can play a lot of old games, like, you know, 2D sprite games. Yeah. They're obsolete maybe in some ways, but, you know, the graphics, you know, your imagination fills in the gaps. Sure, they're like stand-ins for real things, and Alone in the Dark is trying to go beyond that and, like, really try to turn them into realistic Mm-hmm. depictions i think right or at least it was really struggling to and obviously didn't because people aren't that pointy <laughs> well you know it's just pretty it's easy to point at and make fun of and i just don't see 
why that's bad. Like who? Like who? Who was being hurt by that? I'm not- like your memories. Are we shitting on your rose tinted glasses? I'm, I don't. I'm not seeing it. But I was there, you know? Like, I, I actually did, when I was younger, think it was creepy. Like, no, but I, I don't know. When I look back on it, too, like, when you're in the, the attic, right, and it was kind of neat that you could block off the window so the thing wouldn't come in and push the do- the chest on the trap door. But actually... Yeah, you hear that noise. Yeah. But actually, like, looking at it again now, I'm like, wait, you know, the character has no way of knowing that that's going to happen. It's you, the player, knowing things... That are going to happen in the game before they do. And then, you know, it, it, it's like, I don't know. I mean, there's something, I think, to look back at, like, even things you liked and sort of, like, just sort of, ah, ha, ha, it's silly. You know, I don't know. I don't well, see- slowly, if you know another game that makes you learn from your mistakes. What's that? Uh, it's a little game called Dark Souls. Well, that's true, I suppose. <laughs> I still have never yet to play Dark Souls. I don't know if you'd like it. Yeah. I mean, that having been said, I, I do get... You know, because I think we we sort of like mocked it a little bit too, like then the whole backlash about the graphics. Because then in later videos we were just like, all right, then forget it. But with little knocks here and there, you know what I mean? Mm. I do disagree with the notion that it was just the whole graphics, the whole first video. But you know, fine, I'll concede it. You know, hey, if that's the feedback. Well, I think the reason for that is that there just wasn't much else going on. It was you know, a lot of setup with going into the mansion, exploring, and there just wasn't any. There weren't yeah. any real cutscenes to bounce off of. It's just like, look at this, man. <laughs> Do you know one of the Dark Start is a tech demo, actually? Really? Yeah, Infogrames. Uh, info For Grames. healthcare.gov? <laughs> yes, it did, actually. No, yeah. um, but- they made the attic scene, and then they thought it was kind of neat looking, so they made, the, they made the whole game from that, more or less. Two and three? Well, I mean, we've played through two. And it's kind of hard, you'll see in three, it's kind of hard to know exactly where they were going with the series. <laughs> Did it stop at three? Well, so the original trilogy, yes. And then in 2008, I believe. The, the prequels came. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you had Alone in the Dark, A New Nightmare, which I watched a little of, but never actually played myself. And I've heard that's actually not bad. It looks kind of like a Resident so Evil. So that's more modern? Yeah. It's sort of ironic because it looks more like, a, it looks like a Resident Evil clone in some ways. Which is funny, because Resident Evil is technically an Alone in the Dark clone, you know? Circle of life. Exactly. And then there's Alone in the Dark 2011 or 12, I think? No. 2011, maybe 10, I forget. There's a fifth one where that takes place... Yeah, it takes place in Central Park, and they have, like, really interestingly programmed pyro effects in it. So, like, it's got very realistic fire is kind of the big draw. So, that one I know nothing about outside of reviews of it, so... Um, so yeah, but either way, I was, I'm, I'm happy we're in the sequel territory where it's unabashedly just goofy. So those games are not remembered fondly, unlike the first one. I mean, I think, I'll, t- I'll tell you that, like, I like Alone in the Dark 3. I had one in 3, and I finished 3, but even younger, like, playing through 3, and even, like, I'm like, this is ridiculous. You know, hmm. one, you could kind of forgive and say it's a horror game, kind of an adventure game. Combat's, combat always sucked. You know, you, I'm sorry, it did. Um, but, like, that one you can sort of appreciate what they were going for. Three, I'm like, what the hell is even going on here? But you can see it in two, right, where it's like, you know what we need? We need another haunted mansion, only this time pirates. And it's like, why? Why? Or it's like, oh, uh... You know, here here's some card puzzles and tons of gunplay. Like, no, I don't want gunplay in this. Like, this doesn't work great, you know? But that's the thing, and I'm, and I'm sure we could easily laugh at the first Resident Evil, you know, which... Oh, yeah, the cheesy FMV cutscenes. Yeah. And even, voice work in general, horrible controls. Even the stuff that scared you when you were younger playing Resident Evil, if you look back at it now, some of it is kind of cheap. Like, the dogs jumping through the window. Everybody got a, like, oh my god, out of that. But if you come back to it, it is just a pop scare, really. You know? Yeah. A cheap thing. Yeah. You don't, you don't, like, turn off Resident Evil and then be, and like, oh my god, that was a fucking disturbing (laughs) experience, you know? It was like, yay, it's kind of cool, I'm surviving zombies, you know? I'd actually argue the the scariest part of Resident Evil is when you get to the item rooms and you realize how low you are on ammo and shit, and it's like, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I have to go back out there. Yeah. And then, and the then, item like, room music I like a lot, too, throughout the games. Actually, that's true, too, yeah. That said, then Barry speaks, and you're like, this is... <laughs> yeah. It has the serenity, but with an undertone of hopelessness. <laughs> and that's kind of the tone I go for in the podcast. I'm talking about Barry and the item. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. 
I don't understand, too, Capcom, like, really wanting to continue the story of Resident Evil. <laughs> like, I, I just feel like there's a point where it's like, why don't you just give up and make a whole new one now? <laughs> like, Isn't that I, where 6 is basically collapses? I never played 6. Well, we played it at PAX a year ago. All that, yeah. Or this year, rather. Right. All that, then it's just like, I don't know. Because I thought 4, they were kind of rebooting things with, like, Umbrella, the Umbrella Corporation. But then they bring back Wesker and 5, and they're like, no, 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 we're not done with that story. And I'm like, you're not? Because I really think you should be, you know. <laughs> that, Was the story really the draw of those games well, ever? That's what I'm saying. Like So much effort put into making trying to get that to make sense. I know, but it's always the same thing. It's like... Oh, we developed a great bioweapon that has these catastrophic side effects that we somehow never thought of multiple times, you know? Remember to get your flu shot, by the way. I know. It's like, oh, well, the T-virus didn't work, and just, you know, the whole city, the whole lab got overrun with zombies. How about the G-virus? Oh, that's what took over the whole city? Let's go with the Ruberos this time. I, I think... What I, other letters of the alphabet do we have? I, it's like, yeah, I, like I'm really feeling this virus bioweapon thing. And it's like, who is buying it at that point? Just give it a chance. The internet took some time. <laughs> like, DARPA's going to be like, you know, you got something with this zombie outbreak thing. <laughs> CDC just throws their hands up in the air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, guys. I, I can't imagine this ever backfiring on us, except for the five or six times it did. <laughs> yeah, I, it's... And I, I mean, it, it's meant to be ridiculous, I'm sure, but it's also like... Why are we still doing this? Like, I don't care about Neo Wesker anymore. <laughs> Look, if you want to point the blame at somebody, you know who to blame? Who's that? Big Pharma. <laughs> That's it. That's a bit, it's a big indictment about it's healthcare. It's a big social commentary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, alone in the Dark, I guess you could at least say, I feel like the story is, like, fucking out there. <laughs> it's, well, it's there. It's there. It exists. Yeah, one, I mean, one, they were going for, like, a Lovecraft thing or whatever. It's just sort of... Right. Yeah, and it's a little odd at times, but two and three, they just, they, they're just like, we're just gonna fuck, Arr! let's fuck around. Pirates, cowboys, y y you'll see. It's three, is, three is really crazy. Alone in the Dark 2 was fully improvised. <laughs> all the dialogue, no script at all. I could believe that, actually. Yeah. Captain Freebooter on December 25th, 1724. Oh, speaking of impressions, how's your uh, Total Biscuit and or Jesse Cox going? Oh, I need to work on that. Yeah. I do I do have Terraria in my possession. Oh. oh, you did make a promise to the people. That's right. So help we helped uh or I should say uh, you uh participated in Mr. TJB's stream that he did, mm -hmm. playing some Pokémon, you read some creepy pasta during it, yep. raised some money for his uh his friends, uh, some kind of Holocaust remembrance project. It's like a theater group, yeah. It's called Voices from uh, Voices from the Holocaust, and um, yeah, uh, it was a two thousand pound Kickstarter goal. So the last day, they were like so close, kind of like so. I'm like, started tweeting, and I'm like, all right, if you contribute, let me take one step back. Uh, we had posted a Terraria video. Um, it was like two seconds long. Oh yeah, three second let's play. Yeah, exactly, and. Uh, Done fully on Vine, first time. <laughs> For some reason, but it, this is just, I swear, a coincidence, but Total Biscuit had posted a Terrario video of him with uh, Jesse Cox that same day. So we Yeah, he uploaded it like 20 minutes right before our video went up, I think. Yeah, so it was a totally weird thing. And then, um, so now all our all the videos we have are things we think he'll cover, and then when he posts, we'll just post. No, but, um, so uh, there was some, like, crossover there, and then one of the comments he said, like, somebody was like, you should Retsu Prey the Total Biscuit Terraria videos of Jesse Cox, and he's like, yeah, they should, or whatever. So that's what I tweeted, like, you know what, we'll, we'll do an impression of them or whatever uh, if you help this Kickstarter reach its goal, and um, it did, so. Well, a number of podcasts ago, I did do a Total Biscuit impression mm -hmm. towards the end, I believe, and it was, uh, to quote literally everyone, it was immaculate. <laughs> I, I read the reviews that came in. I had been working on a Total Biscuit impression. Because uh, mm -hmm. Jesse Cox, you could just exaggerate the hell out of, and that's, that's, uh, that was, but, um, and, and it was funny because I'm like, holy shit, I think I have this down. And then I recorded it and listened back, and it just sounds like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh. You're from Jersey, right, Total Biscuit? <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it, it totally I had my fucking voice there, and I'm like, oh, okay. I sound nothing like anybody. I guess I'll be the other guy. But, um,. So can you give us a little uh, taste of your Jesse Cox? 
That sounds disgusting now that I just said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, the Tap Cox? So you whip out your Jesse Cox. Come on. <laughs> Show us. No, I'm going to save that for the video. Mm. I'll give you the Total Biscuit if you like. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and I'm here to ask and answer one very simple question. WTF am I doing with my life? <laughs> I'm playing Tawaria with Jesse Cox right now. Hey, all right, mate. Anyway, so. <laughs> well, you do have the speed down. I had the cadence down, I think, in some of the things. Yeah, the but, speed like, and the general cadence. Yeah. But it, it sounds like me just taking on the cadence, so it's like, that's <laughs> right. point, pointless, so never mind. You would fit perfectly on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not already on there. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either. Um, <laughs> oh my god. How, so let, so now, Total Biscuit's the new Danganronpa. It's something that comes up <laughs> in the fucking podcast. <laughs> For God's sake. Uh, yeah. That can be a safe word in the Danganronpa thread for when things are getting out of hand. <laughs> I've gotten to closing that thread after every couple updates now. It's just easier. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's just what I want to make my life monitoring is easier. Leave the discussion to Tumblr. Absolutely. Oh, um, that reminds me, so a lot of people have been complaining about the nothing new to the table thing in the Sandcastle, so we have a moratorium on that now. Oh, yeah. I talked about that a little bit on the live podcast I did, the first one. Yeah. Um, uh, that was a topic someone brought to the uh, brought to the table. Was it melodic waffle? Yes. Hey, that's weird. That's another adjective food. For, what is with that? Anyway, um, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, Zorak and I had talked about it a bit, and it is it it, it is sort of a weird thing because it's like I, you don't want to restrict someone doing let's play just because someone else has done it. Um, Jawbroken in the Sandcastle did bring up a point, which was like, yeah, but if you know, what is is there anything wrong with bringing that up? And it's like, I think if well, you I don't, I don't think it's just I don't think bringing it up is the issue. I think it's just the very dismissive and effortless tone that's saying that has i think that's the thing and eh, what are you bringing to the table your move yeah it's kind of a pavlovian sort of reply you know yeah so it's just like why don't we just calm it down a bit like it's and, saying something without actually saying something about the content that's posted and honestly if you see quote unquote repeat let's plays on something awful there's not, i've never seen one that's like i don't know like this should you shouldn't have made this because what's his face did it so much better you know what i mean like even um i think someone i might be wrong here did a let's play a trespasser and research indicates is like his trespasser LP is like one of the gold standard type of let's plays. You put a ton of effort into it. It's almost like more like a documentary than a let's play. Right. One of the only gold mined let's plays. Yeah. And in fact, uh, when Vimeo decided we're not allowing video game footage, I was talking to the Vimeo staff and I showed uh, the one nice guy because um, I have to be honest, a couple of them were actually like dicks. Um, I showed the one nice guy, I was like, look, uh, look at, here's the, here's this guy research indicates, did this thing on Trespasser, do you honestly think this is, like, the video game footage you're looking to restrict on Vimeo? And he was like, you know, I'll be honest, I would personally allow this, I think it's fine, but we have to make that distinction of all video game footage. So I'm like, alright, you know. But I'm saying he did concede, based on that, that that is more in line with what, like, Vimeo considers good film. That said... Yeah, so guess what? Video games are art. That said, Vimeo Vimeo features also a time lapse sandwich being eaten over thirty seconds. So take what you will of that. And uh, a cricket, I think. But getting back to my original point, someone else did a trespasser let's play, and it's not like it. I don't know, hurt the original or like it's like how dare you? You know what I mean? It's like whatever. A guy wants to play trespasser and add some shit to it. Go for it. It gives you know? someone a fresh forum to discuss the game. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a new perspective brought to it because someone else is doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So, eh, hmm. it's just a thread on a forum. You can vote. Now look at my uh, non-accented Let's Play of Prince of Persia. Well, oh. less, well, okay, Jersey accented, but still. I'm going to shit on that. Immediately. <laughs> I think you should. What else do we have on the agenda? Well, I've played a couple of uh, new games recently. Not new games, but games recently. New games do tell. I've been playing GTA V, been all up in that. I played the Stanley Parable. I also played Brothers. How'd you like Brothers? It was good. Good. I, it did not move me to say tears, like, uh, <laughs> like some people. Right. But I like what it did. I, it, I, I liked the whole tone of, you know, nobody talks, everything is communicated through movement. 
the environments are very rich and it, it tells a great story through those uh through pantomime more or less and i think some of the gameplay elements too especially toward oh the yeah end. some of the gameplay elements are neat the, it, the game wasn't hard really on any level no nah. like things were pretty intuitive it's pretty simple to be like okay so obviously i need to do this here because there, there's a very limited amount of buttons you more or less you know split the controller in half and there's one action button per person right 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 well i like it did a lot of neat things with the characterization of the two brothers again despite that no one could talk mm -hmm. so you know you would have one brother who's very you know focuses on the mission show the npc the map pointed out the little brother you know slaps him on the butt or something like that right and then and then Grand Theft Auto does the same, only now with three characters. I have trouble differentiating the two games, to be yeah, honest with they're you. they're very, very similar. I thought the torture scene in Brothers was a little <laughs> yeah. too much. It was a little out of place. The tone of it completely different from the rest of the game. Yeah, absolutely. That, um, that's, by the way, making headlines is the whole... Headlines? Make, <laughs> I guess. Uh, the, whole, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the whole torture thing in Grand Theft Auto V. Um, yeah, so you said you saw that cutscene, but have not played the game. I've played the game and experienced that cutscene. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you my experience with it, and then you can fill it in the gaps, maybe. Uh, sure. Is that a lot of people are like, uh, the torture... There's a sort of controversy, because some people are like, the torture scene was too much. But then people sort of bring up, well, it's Grand Theft Auto. You kill people by the hundreds. I mean, what is yeah. the fucking problem here? So I went to watch the torture scene, and... I found myself really more confused than anything else. So, um, as far as I understand it, um, this game, this is a necessary mission to complete the story, or? As far as I can tell, yeah, you, it's a mission you have to do. Okay. I came across it rather suddenly. I was just driving around as Michael. He got a message on his phone, mm -hmm. which I think I could have just ignored, but I answered it, and then that started that mission. I see. And it's like a Michael Trevor mission? Yeah, you switch between them. Franklin's not involved. Right, so he just sort of backs out of the room slowly, I guess, with his eyes wide open. So, I didn't quite understand the tone they were going for with it, because the music in the Trevor scene, when you're actually going to interrogate the guy, um, it's very dark, uh, graphically, you know, there's a certain, like, seri there's a lot of seriousness about it. But then there's, like, weird dialogue choices. So, like, you're about to do something to the guy's teeth, and he's like, I just had them lasered. Like, a little joke. Right. But it's like, I don't understand if they want me to, like, feel like, holy shit, this is really fucking brutal, or, ha ha ha, torture, silly, we're Grand Theft Auto, nothing serious, everything's crazy, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. I think what's going on there is Grand Theft Auto or Rockstar, they're trying to dip their hands in like, everything. Okay. Like, they're trying to satirize or poke fun at, like, every possible facet of American culture, American politics. They're all over the place. Okay. You have the whole Life Invader thing, which is, you know, Facebook. Okay. And, uh, you know, you have making fun of celebrity culture, paparazzi. It's, it's, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. But when they're spreading out that much like they're trying to have a little fun with everything trying to poke fun at everything but in doing that they're not really from my point of view when i was playing it they're not really saying anything about those things it's more like hey hey this is a thing in america right right so rockstar is basically trying to be like wow torture sure is dumb and it doesn't get you any information right though despite that you do get information in that torture scene, by torturing the guy, he does tell you things as you do shit to him. See, but then when all is said and done, Trevor decides to um, uh, set the guy free at the end. Like yeah. when you're done torturing him, you have everything you need to know. The uh, FBI, or no, I, I'm sorry, FBI is FIB. Oh, right. Get it? Yeah, no, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's another. Yeah, yeah okay. But uh. The, they say, ah, we don't need him anymore, just uh, kill him. Right, yeah, I and saw that. And Trevor part. has this kind of odd change of heart, because I think the rock star doesn't want you to hate Trevor completely, even though what he does is really bad. So Trevor decides, oh, well, I'm going to take him to the airport and set him free after doing all that to him. Trevor's a very interesting character all around. I've heard that. But when you're driving him to the airport, he kind of does this almost like a recap thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's the end of Sesame Street, and you look, uh, recap what you learned that day. 
Yeah, I think Tortoise on Tour told me on Twitter that it kind of boils down to, like, uh, him and Boydberg, I think, said that, like, it boils down to, like, uh, okay, but here's how we really feel about torture. It doesn't get you information, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Which, like, oh, we don't torture people to get information, we do it because it's fun, or something along those lines, that we just get a rise out of it. Right, because I do, I do personally ascribe to the, I don't think you get useful information out of things like that, because it's like, people will say, I think anything to end pain, you know? So it's like, if, if somebody doesn't have information... So, I mean, obviously I don't know very much about CIA, FBI interrogation techniques, but I mean... You moderate the Let's Play forum, Slow Beef. Yeah, that's true, yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's very odd to have the game force you to do that, um, kind of enjoy it, get something useful out of it, and then later say, nah, we were just fucking around. And I almost feel like... Um, it's sort of included to be controversial, and it was probably one of those things that at a corporate level there were discussions about, so you could probably say, like, you know what, I think maybe at the end Trevor should recap, you know, that this doesn't really work, or in the real life plot, kind of like, you know... I can see that, yeah. Yeah, I just, it's just a very odd thing, because I just, I don't know how to feel about it then at the end, is it like, because... It's, it's just a huge tonal change from the previous stuff you've been through because, you know, everybody in the game is represented by, or not represented by, but they're just kind of like mindless blips on the world map. You just kill them, it doesn't matter. But here it's just suddenly so much more personal and visceral. That's the thing. It's like, I, sometimes I, I get confused on exact what it is exactly Grand Theft Auto wants to be. Because, you, especially when you start with Grand Theft Auto 3, you have this, and maybe, the, I haven't actually played one or two, but like, you have this sort of wacky fantasy sandbox world where, like, everything is just so corrupt, and if you don't die, you just get sent to the hospital, or you don't really spend time in jail, you just get arrested and lose some money. You know what I mean? Right. And it's, like, it's very obvious, like, these aren't real-world things. Yeah, that's just gameplay mechanics, more or less. Yeah, and then there's stuff in, like, I'd say San Andreas to some degree, but especially for where there's, like, real-world implications and characters that you're supposed to care about and do, th- you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, it, it's yeah, again, I think it just goes back to rockstar trying to dip their feet in just about everything and it, just trying a lot of different things, which I will say the missions do have a good bit of variety, mm-hmm. but I think there are some misses in there too, in places like the torture mission, you know, it's clear what they're trying to do. They're just trying to say, you know, America has this, you know, uh, cavalier attitude towards torture and it's stupid. Right. But it's not a very fun mission to play. That's the thing. And I feel like it doesn't really fit in with what I imagined Grand Theft Auto to be. Yeah. Like, I found myself just kind of, you know, going through it. Okay, I need to use this. Now I need to use this. I just kind of wanted to get this over with. It doesn't seem particularly fun. You know, it's, it's not. Yeah. That particular mission. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, and I think, like, that, and what like, creeped me out, too, is that at one point the guy is actually offering information, but you torture him anyway. Like, it was like, he's left-handed. He's like, nah, sorry. And then you torture him, like, okay, and he smokes. But it was like, he's already giving you information. Like, what are you doing? Like I had to break your knee for you to remember that he smokes? I know. Yeah, at that point, too, you just... And think, that he has a beard, I think, for that matter? <laughs> I know, the information is terrible, really. It doesn't seem like something torture would have to get out of you. <laughs> it's like, why don't you just go to my Facebook and look at a picture of the guy, all right? Life Invader page, Excuse yeah. me, yes, right. That's, yeah. Yeah, I, it's... Yeah, it's just... I think it's unsettling because it doesn't really... F- because, well, first of all, of what it is, of course... But then it doesn't really fit with Grant the rest of it. Well, again, I'm with the Grand Theft Auto tone you expect, yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm going. So maybe to that end, it kind of works because they like to do the unexpected. I guess I don't know. I guess so. Yeah, I just like. But for me, it just goes down to it's just not a very fun mission. Period. No, I don't, yeah, it's a, it's kind of tedious to get through. Yeah, and like I know they kind of do that in Grand Theft Auto, but it does seem sort of like a cheap controversy for the sake of controversy kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's Rockstar. I guess that is par for the course, though, with GTA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But overall, it's it's a fun game overall. It has those bumps in the road here and there, but... Mm-hmm. And the... I'm, I'm kind of wondering if I'm getting just tired of some of the general conventions with sandbox games. Uh-huh. Because I played Saints Row 4 recently, and then before that, or after that, GTA 5. Mm-hmm. And GTA 5, the map is, like, enormous. Right. Like, if you went from one end to the other, it would probably take you driving, like, 10 to 15 minutes, maybe. Jeez. Which doesn't sound, like, just hearing that doesn't sound that bad, but just constantly driving from one end to the other, that's a pretty huge map. 
And is there any loading when you switch between characters? Uh, there is loading in between switching characters, but there is not any just going around okay. place. Okay, let's yeah. still... Yeah. But it keeps that... Just that one thing that I kind of get tired of with open world type games where you... It's, despite the mission variety, it still follows a pretty predictable formula. You go to the letter on the map, get a talk to a guy or get a phone call, drive mm-hmm. X amount of miles to point on the map, do mission, you're done. Right. But all that driving and having to pay attention to your GPS, since the map is so enormous and you usually don't know where you're going and you have to watch it, that can get kind of agitating at times. You know, it's funny that kind of was my issue with San Andreas, because mm. once, you, once you get out of the initial neighborhood and then you're out in the country, it was like there was a ton of transit, and, you know, it was almost like too big. Yeah, well, GTA Five is bigger. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Though the place does look amazing. Oh, yeah? Don't get me wrong, but, I mean, after a while, you kind of get over it. Hmm. It's like, okay, so I need to drive here to start this mission, then, and so on and so on. And so on and so forth. Still, overall, it's, it's a fun game. I'd recommend it. It's fun to play for the most part. Uh, if I could only get one, should I get Saint, a GTA Five or Saints Row Four? Hmm. It's a tough one. I would say Saints Row Three over Saints Row Four. Okay. So of those two choices, I say Saints Row Three. Because I well, I, I have my own game decision point to make though, but I think it's been made for me, which is uh, Ace Attorney Five came out. Oh, still haven't played any of those. Oh, you got it. They're so much fun and. Batman Arkham Origins, which... Heard some controversial things. Yeah. Destructoid gave it a 3.5 out of 10. GameSpot gave it a 6. Yeah. IGN gave it a 7.8, which is more or less a a 3.7, you know. But, I mean, IGN tried to say, like, basically, um, it's not as good as the other two, but it's still pretty good. But, I mean, they had a terrible analogy, which was like, it's like pizza. Even if it's bad, it's still good. It's like, that's, what? You know, like. So, so there's going to be a podcast where we talk about reviews of, where we review reviews of games that we haven't played yet? Why not? Um, Destructoid kind of made it sound, sound like a, a bit of a mess. Like, apparently there Yeah, was... it really did. Like, I read the whole thing on Destructoid. It gave it a low score, but seemed to back up everything with legit points, which, assuming they are accurate, doesn't make the game sound good. Honestly, because I, I, I considered it a must-buy even before it came out, because I, I loved, loved, loved um, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City so much. Like, free-flow combat. Yeah, certain things in the city, maybe. Or the Riddler trophies were crazy. But, like, all in all, I was very happy with both games. Yeah, the story of City, especially, was for an open-world game, was really solid. Yeah, agreed. Especially for, like, because it, it did unexpected things with the Batman, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was great fan service y stuff, too. Yeah, absolutely. But Origins, I don't really understand the need for a prequel um, in general. And then, yeah, apparently, like, uh, I've heard that there's some issues with the free flow combat now where people are like, I am having trouble fighting now, suddenly. Like, button prompts aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Or, like, there's some ledges you're sometimes able to jump on, two game crashing bugs, you know? One of the common things I've seen just scanning random reviews, the kind of common thread seems to be that it does nothing new. Which yeah. I don't know if that's, but I don't know if that's bad. I think the tr- it's tricky, right? Because um, yeah, that's again one of those things that like you don't know who to trust quite. Because um, the the boss fights were always kind of, eh, you know, very samey. Yeah, like Asylum, yeah, the Poison Ivy fight was different, but... Mm. Yeah, well, Asylum, pretty much all the fights were big dude rushing at you, right? Yeah, more or less. There's a lot yeah. of that. And it would have been and fine. And even in City, I think there were some instances of that also. Yeah, I mean, that would have been fine if it were just Bane. But then it ended up kind of like, that's not really a boss now. Now it's like a new enemy type. So I didn't hate it, but I, I kind of get like, that's that's not really a boss. Or that now if they're, they're framing it like a boss, is kind of samey. Yeah, you know? City, I liked the boss. Mr. Freeze, I thought, was an extremely unique boss fight. I really enjoyed that fight, yeah. Yeah. That was like their version of the end, where it was... You know, all right, that's silly. <laughs> that was a silly analogy. But, uh, no, it was it was creative, especially... I mean, Ra's al Ghul is sort of a weird boss fight, but I kind of liked what they did with it. Not Maybe not the flying section so much before that. Yeah, but, that was uh, kind of tedious. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I was happy with that boss fight. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, but, uh, I don't know, apparently... 
apparently Origins has some kind of new stuff with the bosses, and one in particular is supposed to be good, and the last boss is supposed to be an interesting thing. Another thing I've read is that they employ a lot of very D-list Batman characters. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess... Well, that's the thing. It's like, I guess they're running low, you know? True. I mean, they still have the Joker. Right. And the Penguin is there, too, I think. Yeah, and I would have been okay with the Penguin. I mean, but, like... Sure. Yeah, I mean, well, the problem, too, is that I haven't really read Batman the comic in a very long time, so... There's certain things like Deathstroke and Deadshot and that I'm not familiar with. Or, like, in Arkham City, you find Azrael, and I'm like, who is uh, one of the Robins now? I can't keep this shit straight. You know what I mean? Is he the guy that knifes himself all the time? I have no idea, if you want to know the truth. Um, I think that the last uh, <laughs> the last thing I've seen of Batman was some of the Injustice Gods Among Us comics that was posted in the funny panel thread on SA, <laughs> where, like, it apparently like some of the art was really badly colored and like Batman has like giant teeth always punching something. It's like it's like crazy. But uh Yeah, I mean so I might end up passing up uh Origins or maybe just renting it. Well yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Based on the negative press that you've heard, are you gonna look at the game at all? You know what it is, it's just nowadays I have less and less time for games. So Yeah. You have to be choosy. Yeah, I um for Arkham City I made time for Arkham City. This one, I'm just like, you know, maybe I'll just spend my money on Ace Attorney 5, play that, like, dig out my 3DS, and play that instead. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame, but, you know, I mean, because, you know, too, you don't want to reward things like that. Like, you want the next, if you want the Arkham games to stay that caliber, then you you got to buy the ones that are actually good, you know? But, you know, and, and I know, uh, I think Stern, Jim Sterling actually wrote the review of um, Arkham Origins. He's getting a lot of shit on NeoGAF for it, but it's like... Oh, he wrote the Destructoid review? I think so. I know he's getting shit on NeoGAF for giving it a 3.5, so yes. <laughs> yeah, but, Makes sense. Yeah, but, like, I mean, what can you do? That's what a reviewer does, you know? Gotta give your opinion. Yeah, like, I know it's Batman, and I did love the last two games, but, you know... So what if 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 the next if the third one has the potential to be not good like where do you and multiplayer is supposed to be like ridiculously silly, also. Oh, like, oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. It does have multiplayer? Yeah, like what? Damn it! Like I don't need multiplayer with everything. But oh, and another thing I heard mm. was that they are shoehorning in a lot of paid DLC stuff. Ah, uh, see, that's yeah. Mm. Which that'll make you a little suspicious of anything. I think I blame Candy Crush. <laughs> piece of shit candy crush i'm on level 147 by that no i'm kidding but um <laughs> i haven't played don't i don't play games so good neither do i so in review i don't think i'm gonna get arkham War. oh in review get it see what i did there so, yeah anything else nope none at all covered Nothing. it all i'm a blank slate we are fully caught up Enough of this guestless podcast garbage. Well, hopefully look look forward to another guest next week. Hopefully super great friend. And if not, we'll just re-upload this one. <laughs> backwards. Yeah, backwards. Why not? It'll be... Oh, happy Halloween. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you dressing up? No. I'm not either this time. I don't have time. I'm just so swamped at work. Mm. So. Dress up as a disgruntled employee. <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> Uh, met, well, one guy's dressing up like Ted Hartrip, so good luck to him. Oh, yeah, I saw that picture. Posted on Reddit. Yeah. Yeah, I read it. Oh, dear. Do you? That's the thing. Uh, next that, time. That particular thing. We'll talk I, about I read it. read it. We'll talk about it next time. Okay. That'll be our next catch-up, then. Yes. All right. Take it easy, folks. Later, guys. <laughs>